We have been in a Mark series. We are still in our Mark series. Uh, I'm not sure when this series is going to end because we are not yet at chapter two. Um, but the good thing is that it's, it's a big, long story. And so you should, you should have an expectation that each week uh, we're, gonna, we're just going to be hearing some incredible things from God's Word. But this morning I want to read out of Mark 1, chapter 19 and 20. Uh, and I am reading from the NIV, which is not the Bible I brought with me this morning. So I'm going to need it on the screen if that's all right. Mark 1, 19 to 20, it says this. No, it doesn't. It's a blank screen. All right. Here we go. Here we go. I'll just, oh, this is from the New Living. Bear with me, 19 to 20. It says, A little further up the shore, Jesus saw Zebedee's sons, James and John, in a boat repairing their nets. He called them at once, and they also followed him, leaving their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men. There we go. Two verses. That's it. Let's pray. Jesus, help us today. Speak to us. Do in us what we cannot do on our own, Lord. We love you. We love your word. Speak to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So, I don't know if you remember. I remember. I remember what it was like to move out of home. Does anyone remember what it was like to move out of home? Is there anyone in here who's still 30 and has not moved out of home? We need to have a conversation. Um... (laughs) unless you're saving for a house and then there's some wisdom. But, but I remember moving out of home. I grew up in, uh, did the most of my growing up in Port Macquarie. And so, uh, you know, it's a little different down here because you can go to uni and stay at home. Uh, but for me, that was not an option. If you plan to go to uni, inherent in that plan was, well, I'm leaving, I'm moving out of home. And I remember that uh, my, my stepbrother, had, hey, he'd gone to uni a year before. Uh, my cousin, a bunch of my friends were already down here at uni. And so it was, it was actually really something I was looking forward to. Um, I know for some people it's a little bit scary. There's a sense of trepidation and in the unknown. But for me, there was excitement uh, because I was, I was finally moving out from the, what I felt was the restrictions of my, 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 my parental home, right? Under this roof, you will obey my rules. Amen. Um, even though I didn't really. Uh, but I was, I, was, I was looking forward to moving out and going to living with my cousin and down the road from my brother. What I didn't realise in that move was everything that I was leaving. Because what I thought I was leaving was constriction. What I thought I was leaving was restriction, right? What I thought I was leaving was these rules that restricted and stopped me from living the life that I wanted to live. And so I was all about going and getting away from those. And, and for some of us who grow up in church, this isn't in my notes, but I feel it's like, we see the church like that. We get to an age where it's like, I feel like I've got to get out from the restriction and the restriction and I need to go and live my life. Can I tell you that if you see Scripture as restriction and constriction and you don't see the benefit of boundaries, you and I need to have conversation. You and I need to have coffee about how boundaries provide true freedom. Because if you are free to do everything, you have no idea what is good for you. But inside of a boundary set by someone who loves you and knows what is best for your life is an incredible freedom to enjoy everything within those. That being said, I didn't have that understanding of my family home. I didn't realise how privileged I was to have a mum who did my laundry, who did my groceries, uh, a stepfather who paid my bills, uh, a cleaner that cleaned my floor. I didn't realise how good I had it in the family home. Amen. Uh, Some of you don't realise how good you have it in the family home. You need to thank your mum and dad when you get home this afternoon. But I left comfort... (laughs) I thought there'd be a few more parents who were a little louder at that point. I left comfort and I left security uh, and and I headed out into into excitement and and risk, right? And it's in those moments of of stepping out that we are often shaped into who, who we need to be to survive in life, right? Often those of us that are still at home, approaching 30 or something like that, um, we haven't necessarily come up against the difficulties um, and and sometimes the trials necessary to form in us the character and the perseverance and the endurance that we require to actually make it through this life. And the crux of Mark, one of the cruxes of this whole book 
that we will keep coming back to is what is the difference between a disciple and someone who is in the crowd? Almost every miracle Jesus does recorded in the book of Mark, there is a distinction between the crowd's experience and the disciple's experience. And, and last week we launched this whole vision around, uh, vision focus back towards discipleship. Because I don't want anyone who is a part of victory to think that all they are called to is to sit in the crowd. You are called to the place of discipleship. And the thing with the disciple, the thing we see with Simon, with Andrew, the thing we see with the brothers, James and John, what we see is that a disciple first leaves. A disciple has to make a decision to leave. You see, the crowd can stay. The crowd can stay in the world and live in the world and still be ministered to by Jesus, still experience the miraculous power of Jesus. But a disciple has to choose to leave that life. A disciple has to choose to leave whatever it was that was creating comfort and security to trust that it's in relationship with Jesus that actually they're going to find those things. That in truly following Jesus, they are going to find provision. They are going to find security. They are going to find comfort. They are going to find a future. They are going to find purpose because the disciples, James and John, Peter, Simon, they, that's the same person, Simon and Andrew, that's what they left. And two weeks ago, I said a disciple is this. A disciple is someone who makes it individual because it can't be done for us and intentional because it doesn't occur by accident or inadvertently and a continual daily and everyday decision to leave and follow. Here's the two sides of following. The two sides of following. We have to step into We have to step into the unknown. We have to step into surrender. We have to step into our eternal purpose. We have to step into a willingness to be confronted and changed. We have to step into trust and faith. We have to step into a life of serving. We have to step into obedience. We have to step into dependence and we have to step into relationship. These are these things that require us to step out of something, to leave something, to step into these. We cannot have comfort here and step into the risk and that it is associated with the call of God that is on people's lives. We cannot remain here in a comfortable, secure state where security is based on, on the things of this world and, and step into the, the, the pursuit of the purpose of God on our lives. It requires us to leave to step in. And James and John, well, they had to leave the family business. I've said here, they had to leave everything to do with their family of origin, what it, what it had in it, the traditions that, that were a part of it. I mean, that business is, is handed down from, from generation to generation. That is what they knew. That was what they grew up learning. That was, that was everything. They have to leave historical methods. They have to leave systemic thinking. They have to leave behind a certain worldview, a certain way that they thought and approached life. They had to leave behind concepts about provision, success, worth, character, love. They had to leave behind jobs. They had to leave behind people. It says here, it says that they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men. These people they have relationship with. That were connecting them to a certain context of their life that Jesus was calling them out of. And there were seasons in my life where I was connected to people in a certain context that was related to a certain way of living this life. And the truth is that to pursue the call that God had on my life, right or wrong, in the way I did it, I had to leave behind some of those people. They had to leave behind routine. They had to leave behind their, their calendar. I don't know how many of us are willing to sacrifice the calendar that we've created that, that, that dictates how we live our life? Are we willing to leave some of that in a pursuit of true relationship with Jesus? They left familiarity. I hate that word. Can't say it. They left security and they left a known future. You see, a disciple is who I am when I follow. But the process of discipleship cannot happen in isolation. 
I am a disciple, but discipleship occurs in community. And I love, because Jesus had like such a small amount of time, he had such a heightened, like, he created the most intense community so that there was the greatest uh, increase in shaping of the disciples, right? Like if you're wondering why things seem so intense around your life at certain stages, maybe Jesus is trying to do an escalation of work in your life. When you think about who he put together, I mean, that was a powder keg of community. (laughs) Discipleship occurs in community because iron sharpens iron. Because truth is spoken in love. Because discipleship involves caring for each other. It's a place where someone else can challenge, can encourage, can model, can protect, and can correct. Discipleship requires friendship and fellowship. It's not about saying what I want in a nice way. It's about loving the person first. Discipleship, the community itself, demonstrates the realities of the kingdom of God. And so in our community, we are about this discipleship. And we gather in two ways. You've heard this now a number of times over the last 18 months. We gather, like on a Sunday, this is what we would say. This is our temple gathering. This is a community together. It's fantastic. But there's not a massive amount of discipleship that occurs here. Celebration occurs here. We have a party here. We're saved. Jesus is providing. Like there's so much to be thankful and celebrate. That's what happens in this space. So where does discipleship occur? Well, we believe that discipleship occurs around the table. In this second space that we've talked a lot about over the last few weeks. And the table is a place where we, we, we really find the two key elements of discipleship. Relationship and spiritual growth. But it's one thing, it's one thing to launch 16, was it 16? 16 new table spaces and believe for 20 at least to be functioning by the end of the year. It's another thing for you as the community that we believe these are for to have an understanding of what they are, right? Like it's one thing for me to be like, hey, we're launching these, awesome, woo! It's another thing for you to have it in your heart of what they are and therefore engage in the space that that is being created for your discipleship. So this morning, I want to invite Pastor Darren and Pastor Geraldine to come up. These guys oversee our table spaces. And, uh, and this morning, we're going to have a little chat. We're going to, we're going to unpack what is the table space really all about. Um, and, uh, and in doing so, hopefully, we are able to help you to understand more about these table spaces. So I'm going to, I'm going to take a seat over here and I apologise to our camera people because I've, I've walked backwards, which means you're going to have to refocus. Um, sideways is apparently okay, but forwards and back is a no-go. Um, how are you guys? Hi. This is good. fun. Doing good. Yes. Lacking some, some food and a beverage. Yeah, but, um, like, oh, where's my coffee? Food. yes. It'll be good. <laughs> Table That'll space be good. is food. Yes. Table space is food. <laughs> uh, let's, let's, let's start with a very simple question, right? I think, I think for most of us, we understand, okay, what is the Sunday temple gathering? But yep. let's keep unpacking what, what is or what are table spaces? What are they? Base question. It what does. are they? What are they? It's <laughs> great. Pastor they they right? do I mean, know. I, I promise you, they know. No, it's they good. Know what it's they good. Are. It's um, it's the smaller gathering that we 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 go to purposefully to build relationship and to be discipled. So it's a it's a intentional smaller space. It's like if this is a party in a home, the the wording that we're using for our temple, our, sorry, our table spaces is just like the family meal. So um, you know when you when you when you come together and the, and the family is chatting and there's some there's some relationship there's you know there's like what happened in your, in your week and there's the opportunity for mum and dad to speak into the life yeah, of yeah. the kids and to help to shape how they see the world based on what happened to them in the school playground <laughs> those are the kinds of conversations that we get to have in our table spaces it's where true relationship is formed true discipleship happens in an intentional way 
Yeah. Did you want to? Well, I was just going to say, you know, the tagline that we have is connect with family, yeah. grow together, and feel the love. Great. So that's really, in a nutshell, what we're going to be doing, right? That's right. Yeah. So why? Like most people think, oh man, Sunday, like that's that's hard enough to get to every week, um, right? Why 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 table spaces? What, what is the important like? If you're weighing them up, it yeah. feels like, oh man, this is another thing on my calendar. Why do you think they are worth time? Um, like, it's awesome that you like that we come on Sunday. Like, that's it's so valuable. Yeah. Every single week, I believe God's got something for you, hundred yeah, yeah. percent. Um, but you, it's hard to build real relationships in like fifteen minutes after a Sunday when you're trying to catch everyone. Hey, hey, oh, yeah, what's yeah. oh, what's up with you? You know, like it's that's tough, and that's not like if we we talk about church being family. Yeah. yeah. So if we if we're truly connecting with family around the table, then that gives us the ample time to unpack, to tell stories, to pray for each other, to really get to know one another. So it's not necessarily another thing on my calendar. This becomes a critical part of being part of the family. That's very good. I like that. Right? Yeah. So it's... It's important to me because I'm a part of this family, so therefore I want to, you know, I want to engage with family on that closer level and also on the bigger gathering. I like that because it it puts it puts the value back on how do I see myself. Yeah. True. That's good. So if I see myself as a part of this family, mm. that well then there's value in in investing in where that family is right. built and created and experienced. I think in addition to that, we are all disciples of Jesus. And I think any space that we can put ourselves in yeah. to develop that relationship with him and to glean yeah. from other people, like what the experiences that um, some like that you go through are going to be different to the experiences that I go through, but we can glean from each other and we can learn from one another and we can grow yeah. together. And, you know, sometimes faith can feel hard. Yep. And so those moments right. of time or those times where we are find, struggling or not understanding why this is, why I'm going through a situation Situation or what's going on, or um, we can encourage one another yep. and remind one another that we are disciples of Jesus, and that we are growing as disciples. And those those challenging moments give us opportunity to grow, just like the celebration moments right. around a table right. also give us opportunity yep. to grow. Right, and we're doing it in in community with family. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome because often, like often, faith looks more like endurance than arrival. Yeah, um, and I think True. I think most people think their faith has to be about arrival, mm. but when you when you're in the family, it's about just keeping going, yep. and actually reminding each other that actually that's that's a huge amount of faith. Right, to keep going. I walk through so the good. valley of the shadow of death. Right. right, it's not it's not about arrival. It's mm. what it looks like to go through. Yeah. Um, I love that. Um, okay, so. We, we, in a way, this morning, like obviously physically, but also we want to paint a picture of, right. of a table space. Um, and maybe in doing that, you can also help to position V groups because yep. they haven't disappeared. Correct. Correct. We That's love our exactly V group right. leaders. We, so we, good. Leaders, we love you. Yes. Come on. You're so awesome. They haven't disappeared, but if we paint the whole picture of table spaces now, yes. they kind of find, find their fit. It's probably yeah. a good way of yes. saying it, right? So, very true. Paint the picture for us, great. Of because there's a bit, there's like it's it's kind of like more than just one way now. Yeah, yeah for sure, for sure. So, um, like you say, like V groups haven't disappeared. They they're they're a critical part of what we do moving forward yeah. because they really balance the uh, the the tension of building relationship and being discipled in a really healthy space. Well, what we realised when we were at our exec retreat <laughs> early in February, we um, we came up with this new concept of widening the scope of groups across our church. Yeah. So can we throw to the screen that uh, that concept that we have? So you can see on there that V groups are kind of in the middle. You've got the the, the X and the Y axes of Developing relationally and, uh, and developing spiritually. Come on, yep. Pastor Karen's pumped. Bring yep. maths, <laughs> maths into church. Looking good. And so, like, right in the middle of that scope is our V groups. But then, like, we we, we wanted to like kind of broaden the range. Like, let's run dinner parties. They're a really fun way that people can stay highly relational and can connect. And then we really wanted to open it all the way down to like pure. Let's get in the word. Let's disciple. 
one another, you know, like let's really study the Bible together. Like I know there's a few that are going to be starting like that as well. Yeah, yeah. So um, this is about leveraging the strengths of the leaders yeah, and right. the strengths yeah. of the people in our community because lo- not everyone's feels like they want to become a V group leader or, or yeah. a Bible study That's leader. Right. You, you know, people are like, I, I can't, I'm not going to teach the Bible, but you can run a dinner party and invite awesome. people and have an, have an, as an organized yeah. thing once a month. Lots of people can do that and lots of people are. Yeah. And, and I think that there's that, that reminder that we're all in different seasons of life. Yeah, that's good. So for some people, it's really easy to get to a fortnightly Bible study that, and that's exactly what you need, and that's for your season of life that works so perfectly. Um, but for others who maybe have small children, it actually is quite difficult to right. do that, and particularly Amen. as a couple. And so there yeah, will be there are seasons that we go through where actually a dinner party or a lunch part it doesn't have to be right. dinner. It can be right. lunch. It can be at a park, and I mean, depending how you make it work, the intentionality just has to be there. That's great. So in, it's not just about building relationship together. We, we do want to be having those conversations where we're growing together, and but it might look a little bit different. And we're yeah, yeah. open to what that looks like. Right. It's just that there is intentionality behind it. You can have social gatherings all the time. Right. That's great. Um, but the table yeah, spaces are about being very intentional about building relationship with all different people, and you might have a you might have generations, lots of generations yeah, represented absolutely. in your table space. Um, but it can also be around a specific season or whatever to be able to help you to continue to grow, build right. relationship, and grow in Jesus. Very good, and care yep. for each other. Yeah, right, hundred percent. So important. That's right. I love what Feel you're the saying love. there, Daz, too. About um, pass it down. Come on, it's official official space. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we joke, we joke about this all the time. Um, about the different, different like, giftings, right? Because Scripture says, you know, if you've been given the gift of hospitality, like, kind of do it with all your heart. If you've been given the gift right. of teaching the Word, do it with all your heart. And yep. by opening up the scope, really, it's, it's helping everyone to have a space where they can find their fit to either host one yep. or attend one that fits their gifting. Yes. You know, I, I know even between me and Rach, uh, there's, a, there's a difference. I'm, I'm probably of the more intense side of the spectrum. Really? Um, I know, I know. Surprising. Never would have picked that. No. It's a light bulb what? moment for everyone there. <laughs> whereas, whereas, you know, Rach is far more hospo- uh, hospitable. 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 That is the word I'm looking for. <laughs> and friendly, right? Let's, yeah. just, let's just say what it is. <laughs> Rach, is way, <laughs> Rach is way better socially, friendly. <laughs> People like her. Um, <laughs> People like you too. Just, just they just have to get. There. They just have to get beneath the intensity. <laughs> Take some time. Bear with me, guys. Um, but we, we would, if we would have run separate ones, we would lean towards different ends of that that, that scope. Yes. Um, yes. And I think that's the beauty of it, and something that when when we landed on that, we felt like, wow, this is yeah. this is huge. Right. Uh, in terms of actually having a framework. Yep. That really is about our community building community. Yep. That's right. Uh, because this isn't about us as, say, the staff of Victory building something, this is a framework mm. for you, who are Victory, right. to build Victory. Yeah. Um, if Victory is going to grow, and I, I, I'm deliberately kind of aiming this way, if Victory is going to grow, it's because you grow and grow others. Yeah, come on. It's not because we have great messages on a Sunday. Yeah. It's what the community does with that right. as a community during the week. Yeah. Um, and, and so these table spaces are really the place in which we believe the community builds the community. It cares for itself. It, 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 it's able to, to encourage each other. Uh, it's not those elements that are integral in community life are not left to like the few pastoral staff of the church. No, the community is building itself. The house is building itself. We aren't. We don't go to church. We are the church. It's a Come maximum on. that Pastor Keith uh, really brought to us, and it's it's true. So much in in this table space where. We can't. We don't. We don't run them all. I mean, you guys each run one. Yes, we do. But if it was if it was up to us to run them all, we wouldn't. We really wouldn't have enough. Well, we no. couldn't do it. Um, That's right. But you two kind of run different ones. So talk a little bit about Very much the differences. So. You can go Me? first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do it. So mine is more like a dinner party. No um, surprises. No there. surprises there. 
Um, but mine, uh, one of the things that I really realised is, really realised, that's good, is um, that on a Friday night, there's a bunch of youth parents who drop their kids off every week and then have to go back and pick up their kids again at the end of youth. And so what I thought we could do was Sorry. gather around a table while, awesome. these, uh, while our kids are at youth and talk together, get to know each other, build relationship. And so that's what we've started doing. So once a month on a Friday night, we drop our kids off at youth and then anybody who's available comes to the Matara and we have a, a meal outside under the heaters. Come on. And uh, they're delicious meals, by the way. If I you love ever that go, it's at the pub. It's at the pub, yep. <laughs> um, that's so there's good. A, there's another play space that our kids can, the, that the other kids can play in. So that works really well as well. Um, but I just, like even on Friday night, we, Sometimes we can have up to 30 people there, including our kids. Yeah, um, wow. But on Friday night, we had a, a smaller one, and there was about seven adults, I think, that came. And, oh, my gosh, we had such a good conversation That's awesome. around what God's doing in our lives. And yeah, people were so open and just sharing. And that comes from building relationships. So it took That's, a, it. that's like yeah. our fourth one, I think. And most of those people that were there on Friday night have been to all of them. Um, and so it meant that there was a trusting space to be able to then have a more deep conversation because we were able to in that moment. And oh my gosh, I came away from that just feeling so refreshed and feeling honoured and privileged awesome. to be a part so of the discipleship journey of all these people and just yep. getting to know people more. So the, ours is very much, um, you know, probably more on the relational yeah. Up the there, di- the up where the dinner party dot is. Side of things. But we have got intentionality to it. It's not key. just about having dinner together. It's having dinner, building relationship, and having conversation. Sometimes it's with yeah. the person next to you, and that happens every time yeah. where there's conversations happening one-on-one with people or a couple might be having a conversation with another couple, um, and they're happening as well. So it's But it's the space that we've created right. for people to then be able to, and that's it. to do it's that. It's the table space. It's great. It's, yeah. Yeah, that's unreal. That's but yours is a bit different, man. Yeah, so um, I, I, I love... I've led V groups for many, many years, and that's just the... the kind of the way that we, you know, want to do it, um, building really great relationships, but then that really uh, focused discipleship as yeah. well. Um, so we ran a, a course for young marrieds late last year, and the, the level of community that, that was found in that space, we were like, we've got to run a V group next year yeah, and yeah. Um, really sew in in a discipleship way, but help them to stay connected as young marrieds awesome. as well. So um, like the first night we had, I, I was teaching them how to prophesy. I'm like, we're going to just, just dive right right in right now. <laughs> so we had, a, you know, we had some connect time and then some study and then we're just like, put some, like some, you know, um, instrumental worship music on and let's teach you guys how to prophesy if you don't know. And it was like, what? You know, and, and some, of the, some of the guys are here today, they were just kind of thrown in the deep end, like, what's going on? But it's like, this is, uh, this is how, this is what it's about. It's, it's about awesome, learning man. to move in the spirit, partner with God and do it, doing it together. Yep. It's not, I'm not just doing it all by myself. This life is not just about me. It's about others and what's God doing through me into that space. So discipleship and relationship is a really yeah, you know, yeah. you know, great kind of like part of the scope that V groups fall in. That's where my heart is. Yeah, so. great. That's awesome. That's so good. Hopefully, hopefully in this discussion, you're getting a little bit more of a picture of what what our heart is for these spaces, um, and that is really that they can kind of look like a whole lot of things depending on your personality, right. your gifting, but what, what they need to have is intentionality around building relationship that would, that would be the platform for intentionally developing our relationship with right. Jesus um, and discipleship. Like oh. the idea of being a part of it is that we would have chosen that individual choice to be a disciple and because we've chosen that, we would put ourselves in the place of good. discipleship. Mm. Um, but we're, so we're, I guess where to from here? I mean, we launched 16. We also have 
the, the V groups that are currently yep. running. Right. Uh, so I think we've got like 22 spaces available. Plus, I think I actually think it's a bit more than that because our Gaities run some incredible um, That's true. V groups and, and, as well, and our Prime, and our prime, our prime guys, guys are already right. some tables. So we, we're yet to kind of you know absorb them into the new system. Yeah. Uh, but they're running and they're going strong. They're strong. So yeah. they're awesome. Yeah. And we want to we want to keep having like at least 20 of these going by the end of the year. That's right. Yeah. Uh, understanding that some people uh, get really excited and then realise, wow, it's pretty tough. Uh, to yeah. do it in this season of life. Um, but we want to encourage as many of those that were like, yes, to, to keep yeah. going. But really, no, nobody likes hosting a space that no one comes to. <laughs> That's true. Like, let, let's be honest. <laughs> um, so how do people now actually go, I want to be in a space? So um, our website is a great place to start. You can come and see one of us if you'd like to as well. But uh, we will direct you to the website anyway because the website will give you an opportunity to fill in a form. If you go to the Join a Table Space page, then you can click on that. It will take you to our Connect form. You can let us know that you're interested in a table space. Give us any other information that you like. If you are, We probably already have where you live, so if you want it to be close to home or uh, if we can, we will definitely try to help you with that. Um, if there's, if you'd particularly like to be in a women's group or a men's yeah. group, then we can facilitate that. If you'd like to be in a group with other young families and those sorts of things, just let us know whatever information you think right. you need to tell us so that we can help you. And we'll have a conversation with you as well, That's obviously. Right. Um, but yeah, and I think like... The verse, the scripture that comes to me, I'm going off script here, sorry, oh, everybody. That's fine. Um, the scripture that comes to me is do not despise the day of small beginnings yeah. as well. Wow. And so some of our table spaces might start off small, but they're going to grow. And as they grow in that space, we are going to see like momentum. We're going to yeah. see an, an incredible um, deepening of our relationship with Jesus and with each other. And so I just think that that's really important to remember as well. Some of, our, some of the table spaces, like the one that I run on a Friday night, might already look a little bit bigger. Um, but there'll be other ones that are more intimate, yep. and that's okay. God knows and knows what we need at the right times as well. Yeah, yeah? Awesome. that's good. Plus, um, all of the new leaders, you know, we encourage you to write down a bunch of names and just you know yeah, chase people. Great. And awesome. you know, there's a, a few ways that these groups will grow from from you yep. or from them. You might get a few invites, and you'll have to choose. Oh no, what oh, will no. we do? Uh, but you can uh, you can make the decision there. It's good. Yeah. Fantastic. Can we, can we thank these two incredible pastors? It's fantastic. Who, who's a little bit excited about being in a table space? Yeah, there's a few people. All right, fantastic. We need, we need to ramp that up a little bit. You need to get excited about table space. Um, I'm not giving you this as a direct instruction, but my preference would be, my preference would be that you are in a table space more than you're at Sunday. Because if we're a church that is committed to discipleship, we cannot have an expectation that you would be here and not in the place that we're saying discipleship would actually happen. Now, on the flip side of that, I believe that those who are invested in community and who are in a table space and who have fantastic relationship, the result of that is a desire to be here. But we've got to get that around the right way. And so my encouragement to you is if right now, if your calendar is so full, take it to Jesus and refine it. But firstly, find a table space. Be there build relationships, fellowship, be grown in your relationship with Jesus. And I'm telling you right now, you cannot pursue that and not fall in love with the bride of Christ. You cannot pursue Christ and not love his house. So if you're struggling with a desire to be in church, get in a table space. If you're struggling with a desire to come here on a Sunday, It's convenient to be online. Get in a table space. Because in that place, you refine Jesus, your relationship with Him. And out of it is a love for His house. Out of it is the pursuit of His kingdom, a pursuit of His purpose. And I'm telling you, we will see this gathering come alive 
with celebration, with community, not because we drive this space, but because we believe in table spaces, because we believe in the small space, because we push for people to actually develop intentional, deep relationship with each other so that when they rock up on Sunday, the community is already built. We just get to experience it and it's overflowing in this place. That's where we're heading as a church. But last week, we launched this, this whole vision for these spaces. It wasn't all we talked about. We talked about uh, our next steps, uh, which is some intentional spaces that, you, that will help move you forward in your relationship with Jesus. We also talked about our coffee trailer and a desire to actually, yes, we have it here, good oil coffee, it's fantastic. Uh, you can get coffee before and after service now, uh, and you can be as caffeinated as me, which is, which is fantastic. Uh, but we want to staff it so we can take it to our Ush uh, centres so that we can have it available for our Victory Centre initiatives. Uh, we want to keep consolidating both of our service spaces uh, here and online. Uh, and so we want to invest in some equipment for that. Um, also, I just, I just want to say this. If you are someone who online is your space, you have, you have decided this is my community on a Sunday, and you have a heart for a table space, we don't, we don't know. We don't know what table spaces look like online. I mean, we've all done Zoom, but perhaps that's a part of it. But if you have a heart to run a table space for those who are a part of the online community, please send Pastor Darren or Pastor Geraldine an, an email and say, I don't know what it looks like, but I wanna do a journey and I wanna, I wanna build that, I wanna build our online space. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, also, as a part of Vision, we talked about what we're doing beyond our church, significantly supporting our Victory Centre, continuing to support Pastor Turbo on C3 Bangkok, um, our investment in SRE, uh, our continued sponsorship of regional prayer gatherings, Project Blessing, Crunch and Sip, and, and a real desire to see our playgroup continue to go from strength to strength, um, including another day, amen, prophetically. Um, in the, in the Victory Centre space, we are launching our client support services arm, which is going to be amazing. We are continuing to pursue recognition and influence in the community, and we're looking to increase the funding that we get from grants and partnerships outside of church. In the Ush space, we have, we have three of our centres that are up for tender, and we're believing that, that we're going to see those get renewed so that we can continue the relationship we have with those schools. Uh, we're looking to stabilise Ush post-COVID. For those of you who are a part of Gala, you know we launched a sixth centre coming out of COVID, which you know was pretty amazing. Um, but now we're in a, a place of consolidation in the leadership structure and across those centres, so we want to do that well. Uh, and we really want to invest in our staff. Uh, we want to ask the question, what does it look like to honour our staff in the Ush space? So that's the scope of what we're looking to do over the next 12 months. Uh, and I want to thank every single person who has committed some finance over the last weekend uh, to that being able to occur. But I know that not every person was able to be a part of Gala or a part of Sunday. Maybe you're online this week and this is the first you're hearing about what it is that we are doing over the next 12 months as a church. Uh, we wanted to make sure that, that everyone had an opportunity to sow seed. Uh, God says that, that He will increase seed to the sower. Interestingly, He doesn't say He will increase seed for those that build big silos and store it. He loves a generous giver. He loves someone who wants to sow the seed that He has provided into opportunities to see increase. And so we are, we are, I, I really believe in giving opportunity for people uh, to sow seed. There is no, there's no uh, obligation to do that, obviously. Um, but I do believe what Pastor Darren said earlier, there's a difference between the tithe and seed. They are two different descriptions of provision in our lives. There is the tithe, which is God's first is for His house. There is seed for us to be generous on every occasion. They are, they are different elements of the financial scope of our life, and we get to use them in different ways. Uh, but this morning, if you haven't had that opportunity, we have an opportunity for you to pledge finance this morning. Uh, we've, got, we've got a little bucket down the front here. We'll also have some of our pastors. Uh, we, we believe in praying for every pledge that comes in, believing that God will do what He says and increase the seed to the sower. Um, 
And so this morning, if you would like to do that, our venue team has our pledge cards. They also have our dream cards. We believe in bringing something of our personal life with us uh, as we are believing for God to move over our finances. We are believing for God to move in areas and bring breakthrough and bring miracles in our lives. We don't believe you can buy a miracle, but we believe faith should not be compartmentalized to just one space of our life.